Hey, AP Chemistry. So I just wanted to walk you through the calculations for your calorimeter constant, just in case you missed it. So here's my sample data, and I have some notes around here. Just so you know, I got all of this information from page, uh, like the second page. We have the background, and then on the second page of the background, it talks you through how you're doing those calculations. Um, so if you're lost or just need another reference, the second page of the Google Doc or the handout has all of your calculations on how you're doing things. Um, but just to quickly walk through, to get your calorimeter constant, you've got volume of cold water, volume of hot water, you have an initial temperature from the cold water, and an initial temperature from the hot water. Uh, this is just fake data. Your data would be a little bit different. Now the total mass is, now remember the volume is equal to the mass for water, so I just add the two, I get 200 and I put grams. Um, and now my average temperature, you're gonna need to get the average temperature. I just took the two temperatures that I started with initially, added them together, and then divided by two to get the average. I'm calling that T average. I got 35.05. In class, I accidentally rounded it to 35.0 and that actually drastically changed my calculations. Um, but I'm gonna use all four of these sig figs. And then the final temperature that you got was just whatever the final temperature of the mixture is. So like I mixed the hot and cold water and then it turned to a final temperature, boom, that was my final temperature. Um, and then now I wanna show you how you're gonna do some calculations. This is T average, this is T mix, and this is T initial. Now the heat that was exchanged between the water actually went to your calorimeter. So the water, energy that was exchanged and changed and lost is equal to the heat of your calorimeter. Now, just make sure that this number is positive. Basically, when you do Q of the water, you should get a negative number, and then you're going to negate it, and you're going to get positive for Q of your calorimeter, right? So this energy change of the calorimeter should be positive. And then the way that you calculate this, and I'm going to show you where that calculation comes from, equation three in your handout, Basically, you're going to first get the Q of the water. Q of the water is going to be the mass of the water for us. That's 200 grams or however much total water you used. Specific heat of water, which is 4.18 joules per grams degree Celsius. And then T mix minus T average. From my data, I subtracted T mix from T average. Somebody already uh, messaged me today or this evening and said that their T average was smaller than their T mix, that's okay. Just make sure that in the end, your Q of the calorimeter is positive and that your C of the calorimeter or your heat capacity for the calorimeter is positive. And if you show me the negative number, I'll just tell you to turn it into positive. So anyways, we're gonna do Q equals MC and then T mix minus T average is kind of like our delta T. I showed my work here, MC, Delta T for me is negative because I did 34.8 minus 35.05 and I got negative 0.25. And then my Q of the water ended up being negative 209. And then I turned that into positive because negative Q of the water is equal to Q cal. Whatever the water lost was gained by the cup. And so that's that number that goes right there, 209. And then if I want the calorimeter constant, I'm gonna take Q cal, which I just determined, and divide it by T mix minus T initial. Now T mix was the final temperature. T initial is just gonna be the initial temperature of the cold water. So T mix, 34.8 minus 22.5. I did 209 over 34.8 minus 22.5, and I got about 16.99 or 17. You are gonna need this number for the rest of your trials when you're dissolving your solids and getting a heat of solution. So make sure you do not lose your calorimeter constant because you're gonna need it later.